government, even though we were aware of using computers uh, and, and had been since 1988, when the website actually came about, we got really involved in it once it had opened and then started critiquing it and making it more user-friendly and more cooler. In the beginning, it was kind of nerdy. And then it got a little bit more um, rock and roll. And um, one of the things that was really beat was in the beginning, there was a, a guy named Shit. I mean, I may have to bleep that, but there was a guy named Shit that was running programs through the chat shop, you know, in the diner, and people tried to talk, and all they would say was just shit, 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 all the time. And, and, and I finally figured out a way to jam the program to find out what his IP address number was, and we banished the guy. And then we determined a way that the administrative people there, if someone came on there that was being racist or homophobic or being just, you know, super vulgar that, you know, hey, this is a privilege, it's not a right, you don't belong here. So, I mean, we had to keep it rock and roll still, but I mean, you know, a guy that runs a program that says nothing but shit, it's like... <laughs> Megadeth songs are really visual. It's not, you know, talking about puppies or sitting in the field with a bumblebee girl or stuff like that. You know, it's, it's actually, there, there's a story going on. And we had uh, talked with people from Marvel Comics and from Malibu Comics, but they just didn't get Megadeth. You know, Megadeth is like, it's not something that's really hard to figure out. You just have to kind of close your eyes and run with the lyrics and it becomes a story. And that's what happened when the guys from Chaos, when we met with them, we described what the band was about. And he goes, I know, I'm a fan. And I went, huh. And so we talked a little bit more. He goes, I know, I'm a fan. And I went, okay. And so then all it was basically was me go running down the lyrics and telling him what the influence of the song was and what the impetus, and where the song started from. And, and that's their baby. Well, you know, they're the really terrific guys and great artists. When, when Dave and I first got together and we started doing this, we had a set idea what we wanted to do. And when Marty joined the band, one of the things I told him was, before you do your solos, read the lyrics. And, and now it's, I, I'm not sure how much he does that still. I don't know if he ever even did it, but <laughs> <laughs> the point is, you know, it's like if you, if you read the lyrics, it gives you kind of a mood, you know, and, and I, you know, they, they've had different takes on some of the songs and from where I came from, but at least, you know, it's a different perspective. And, and, and I think you can. Great. Now I heard uh, Volume 1 sold out. What we're hoping is that. This guy likes negative, so if you stamp the clear, go ahead. So I got behind Marty and we breezed right through. <laughs> so, Nick, when you're in good with the officials like that, I guess that's, that's a good definition of success. Honey, I've got something for you. What is it? Oh, honey! It's Megadeth! <laughs> The Essential Megadeth, three of their best albums, now on sale. Rest in peace, peace sells and who's buying, and countdown to extinction. Oh, honey, I love it. It's The Essential Megadeth, in stores now on Capitol CDs and cassettes. Albums sold separately. Makes a great gift. Goodbye. Yeah.